Hello, this is Michael McCarthy, and in this video we're going to take a look at some hair dynamics uh, with Ornatrix in 3ds Max. This is a uh, user file that we got sent to us for um, some dynamics work, and I thought it might be good to just kind of show a couple of things that might help you in your production workflows with dynamics in Ornatrix if you're using Mass Effects. So if I grab this hair and I add a OX dynamics modifier to it, and just go ahead and press play. We're going to see a couple of things. First, it's going to take a long time to kind of start simulating and when it does, uh, the hair gets kind of blown all over the place. If I reset this, uh, we can see that that's going to be due to a couple of different things. Okay, uh, The first thing I recommend doing when you set something like this up is going over to your Mass Effects tools under Utilities and saying Enable Visualizer. And if we run that again, we can see that um, we'll see all the joints that get created and all the collision objects Mass Effects needs to make. And you can see that there's a pretty big problem here. Uh, first, there are way too many of them. And second, there are, uh, they're much, much, much too thick. So they're all trying to push away from each other. If we just turn this off, you can kind of see how that's working. So uh, to solve the first problem, let's go into the mutual forces and let's just choose uh, to bring down the global radius of the wisps. So I'm going to set that to something maybe like 0.75 or 0.7 and let's run this again. See it takes some time to reset and Mass Effects can be finicky so uh, when you overload it like this uh, you prone to things like script errors and all sorts of other things. Remember that Mass Effects is a kind of game engine dynamic setup and it can, um, if you kind of overload it, um, it can certainly give you some issues. So if we run this again, we should be able to see that it'll take a little while, but as you can see, the hair isn't really blowing out everywhere. Uh, it's holding in place for the most part and kind of dropping in. Now, the only problem with this is it really is taking quite a long time, and that's because there are just so many joints here. So let's look if we can get this a more of a fighting chance uh, to simulate. Now, all these joints may be needed for styling or final rendering, but probably not for dynamics. So let's go in, and underneath Edit Guides, we're going to add a OX Details. So strand detail, and that's going to allow us to uh, give our hair a lot less uh, joints. If we go down um, here, you can see that you can set the viewport and the render to a couple of different things. And if I just turn this on and off, you can see that you know the the look of the hair as far as the shape is pretty marginal, uh, even with a viewport value, um, you know, of 15. I think we'll we'll stick with 15 because that'll work well. Now if we go back up to Dynamics and press play, you'll see that um, this will start to simulate almost instantaneously and you know the hair kind of deforms well. We can turn off the visualizer for now. Now the only piece of this is uh, the hair is kind of all flattening out as with a lot of Dynamics engines and there's a couple of different ways we can combat that in order to get uh, a bit of our styled hair in with our Dynamics. Let's take a look at that first on a little bit more of an extreme and simple example. So I'm just going to hide this and I'm going to unhide uh, my other layer here. So here's an extreme example of something like this and this has the same thing going on. First off, if I look right off the bat, down in number of guide points I have 50 which is quite a bit. I'm going to do that same thing which is going to add my OX detail, strand detail. You know, we'll turn this on or off. Good general shape. Uh, maybe we could go for 17 there. Okay, that's going to definitely be important. Uh, underneath our edit guides, and then we'll add our OX dynamics on top of it. We'll keep visualize on so that we can see what these look like. That size is probably pretty good. We might make them a little bit bigger uh, if we wanted to. So we could go back down into mutual forces probably for this one you know 1.2 would work pretty well it's important to note that 
you don't only want to set this very low. If you start setting the global radius really low, these things will start pulling apart and breaking apart, which is another result we don't want. You don't want them to all push away from each other, but if you make them so tiny, it, it's hard for them to solve. Uh, they start kind of breaking off and falling off in places. So that's something that you kind of want to avoid. So now we're pretty much where we were with um, the other hair, but this is a pretty extreme example. This is long hair that is going to all flatten out. It's not going to hold. It's you know really long and it's working against gravity here because it's sticking out to the side, uh, which is difficult. So what I want to do is take a look at a couple of things that we can get to kind of have this hold its position. So the first thing is going to be when we go up to internal forces, there'll be a few forces that we can deal with here. Okay, uh, Dampening is obviously a great force. So if I set this up to 10, we should see the difference. It'll really start to move through the air a little bit slower. I'll set that back down to 1. The two that are going to be really important are going to be global spring and global limit. If we set the global limit very high to like 180, this is how much each one of these joints can bend, 180 degrees in this case. So if we uh, press play, you'll see this hair uh, will really start to lose its shape even up here. Everything starts to kind of bend as it goes through the air and uh, that's something that's important to note. Uh, if we bring it down much much closer to one so you know, uh, or zero, uh, we'll just set it to one. We start to get a little bit of a better hold as we start to move. Now the hair is very heavy at this point so one thing that we're going to want to do is go up to hair density and for this extreme example probably lower it really pretty low uh, maybe 0.1 will get us somewhere so we can see what we're doing so now we can see the hair it's kind of dropping in I'm just going to zoom out a bit and it's holding its shape a little bit uh, but not quite as much as we would want. So what I'm going to do is just go back down to global limit. We're going to drop this a lot closer to zero and we're going to give it a little more spring to work with and let's see what we got here. So now you can see we're starting to kind of get that hold out of the hair uh, as it holds its groom and kind of bends down at the base, but we still need to work with that density. So I'm going to set that down to 0 0.02, uh, maybe even 0 0.03. Let's press play again here. Now what we should start to see is even at the base it's going to start to hold and kind of spring back into place. Okay. We could probably set this down. We could probably maybe uh, bring the tip so that the tips are a little bit less and then you can see they'll start to spring back in there. Uh, most of these parameters you can adjust interactively. So I might give it a little more global damping. Maybe 10. You can see that it's pretty much holding that original shape once it kind of spawns back and kind of springs back into action. So there we set a couple of different parameters. They're definitely fairly extreme. We have our global limit fairly extreme down and we also have our uh, density pretty low for this hair. But you know we've been able to kind of hold this in an extreme position pretty safely. Okay, Let's go back to our other example on the head and see how this is in a more uh, in, in practice here. So we're going to take this and let's turn that uh, back and let's employ some of those changes. Okay, so I'm going to bring this down to maybe a 0.1, and let's we know that we're going to bring our density down a bit. So let's bring that density down. All right. Actually, uh, when this is simulating, it's simulating both of these hair uh, options, and that may be slowing us down a little bit. So I'm just going to go to our uh, plain hair and just delete this dynamics modifier off of that. So now when we go over here we'll do a quick simulate and you can see that the hair drops into place but it's still it's trying to keep its form a little bit. You can see those curvatures and you can see this 
kind of sliding into place. And you want to, you can play with that uh, a bit. So if we just kind of turn this off, if we reset, you can see fairly similar uh, as far as that goes. So uh, let's let's go back here and we'll kind of play with it interactively like we did before. Maybe I'll give it a little more spring so that it holds into place a little bit more. You can see it kind of moving into place. Uh, a little bit more dampening, so maybe five. So that it kind of settles a little bit better. And I think that's pretty good for the moment. So let's grab uh, our little sphere here. And we can see if I grab this sphere, it's kind of animated there. It's going to kind of go through, we'll move this into its path a little bit. And just add a kinematic rigid body to that and do a quick simulate. So now we can kind of simulate this. It'll cruise through, go through the hair. Hopefully we'll see that even with this ball kind of crashing through, all the dynamics happening there, uh, it'll kind of try and keep and hold that shape that we did originally. You can see that curve coming in. You can see these curves coming in. And that's really what we want. So uh, we have that kind of simulation there. So I'm just going to kind of stop that. And you can see that, um, you know, even after we went through and uh, created some animation of uh, something brushing through, it'll still have a little bit of hold to that style so that you can have your dynamics as well as your style kind of at the same time when you work with this. So I hope that helps when you're setting up your dynamics with Ornatrix if you're using Mass Effects. Thank you very much.